need to survive. Say, I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. Say, we're all, we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We're all, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will it is that is. We're going to do that one more time. This time I want us to sing it like we believe that the person next to us or near to us is important to us because we need them. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all. We're all a part of God's
We want to welcome you tonight to our wonderful program streaming live from the Apple Creek Seven-Day Adventist Church located in Markham, Ontario, Canada. And we want to welcome you to night number two of our wonderful series, our Family Enrichment Series called Coping During These COVID Times with our special presenter, author, pastor and family therapist, Dr. Alonzo Smith. Tonight's topic will be dealing with the pain of rejection. Rejection? Do you mean like throwing a basketball and then rejected? <laughs> no, no, no. No one's blocking anybody rejecting a basketball. This really type of rejection we're talking about has to do with feelings. It's where one person loves somebody or likes someone and they don't like them back. They actually turn away from them. Oh, well that sounds like it hurts a lot. Yeah, it really can, and it can last not only when you're a child, but even in your adult years. So tonight's message is very important. We want to encourage you to reach out to us, and we promise to reach back out to you. At any time during the program, you'll see a number on your screen. Text the word family, family, to the number on your screen if you want Bible study, if you want prayer, or perhaps if you need counseling, we are here for you. You, pro you reach out to us and we, we promise to reach right back out to you. We really want to interact and support your family. So if you have any questions about family situations, family dynamics, put your question into the chat on the live stream. We'll take note of them and we're going to have a question and answer session with Dr. Alonzo Smith sometime this week. So. Gather your family around and, and continue continuing watching this program and may God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, tonight, oh God, we come. Father God, we pray tonight, Lord, for your, as I come, God, I ask you to wash me, Lord as we present all of us, oh God, in, before you tonight. Lord, we're praying against the spirit of rejection because so many of your children have been lied to by the enemy. Father God, some children have been rejected before they were even born. And we pray in the name of Jesus tonight that you will uproot that spirit of rejection. And remind us, oh God, that we have been bought with a price that you have chosen us. So we pray, oh God, for total healing tonight. We pray, dear God, that where others have been told that they were not good enough, Father God, that you remind them, Lord, that you, oh God, have made an ultimate sacrifice. The Christ you paid on Calvary's cross was sufficient, oh God, and it's all because of your love. So, Father, we pray for complete healing for your people. We pray, dear God, even now, for those, oh God, who are being living in abusive relationships or whatever it may be, Father, for your hands of mercy to come down and touch them, anoint them afresh and rewrite their script, God, your script with your hands and heal their hearts. Help us to remember, God, the who we are and who you are. And we thank you, God. We thank you and we praise you for what you have done in our lives and help us, God, to remember that it's not over because you have already prepared a place for us that we will come to live with you and there will be no more separation, no more rejection, no more, oh God, 
and your people will be free. So we thank you, we praise you in Jesus name, amen. This is my story of rejection. As a youngster coming to Toronto, church was everything. I wake up in the morning and Sabbath morning and I look forward to going to church. I had a good time of ch in church. It was everything. Until something happened to me. I now had a child without being married. It's a taboo for the church and maybe taboo for the world also. But I now had to face that. It now had shame, fear, and guilt on my part. The place that I enjoy now and I'm afraid, I now became afraid of. No one said anything to me, but everybody spoke about me, not confronting me. And this, I was very, very uncomfortable. But one thing I, I, I remembered in the home that I was raised, that God forgives us when we make mistakes. So I held on to that the best no, the way I know how. It was difficult at times. It was hard because you felt alienated sometimes. You felt ashamed. But thank God for grace and mercy. I keep coming. I keep attending. And God gave me the strength. Not because I was able to do it, but I want to thank God for giving me the strength to hold on. In spite of my mistake, in spite of my shortcomings, I understand that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I learned that from my parents at home. So I was confident that God is able to forgive me I know I felt short. I know I would am to blame. The church didn't do anything to me. I did it to myself. And I had to learn to live with it. And I'm thankful to God that in spite of what happened, I hang on. I came in. I attended. I encourage anyone. If you slip up, if you fall, hold on. We serve a forgiving God who's always willing to forgive you. Admit your faults. Come before him and be strong, although sometimes you mightn't feel you have the strength. But the strength come out from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He's able to give that to you. So hold his hand in spite of how embarrassed you may feel. Just keep trusting and keep working through it. I thank God that I've held his hand. I have not been perfect. I've made other mistakes since. I make many mistakes. But I'm grateful that the church, coming to church on Sabbath, morning and staying in church had given me the strength to hold on to the hand of the man who stole the water. I'm so grateful that God is everything, not just to me, but to be everything to all of us. You know my favorite thing at the time of the night is getting prizes and giving them away. <laughs> so if you want a chance of winning a prize, you have to text GIFT to the number down below and you will have a chance of winning a prize. May God bless you. I hope you enjoy this program.
Amen. Hallelujah. What a wonderful song. That's love. You know, my friends, you and I have a God who loves us. He left the throne of indescribable glory and came down into a world all seared and marred with curse and sin. That's love. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. We thank our family for providing this beautiful song to strengthen our hearts, understanding the love that God has given us. Uh, greeting, greetings, Christian friends, loved ones. I, I bring you greetings from, from New York City, my conference, the Greater New York Conference, uh, to your conference and to your church, the Apple Creek Church, and to all our friends and loved ones who have been watching around the world, we say greetings. This is our Family Life Secret series, our Family Life series, coping in these COVID times, coping in these COVID times. And uh, uh, remember, there'll be no meeting tomorrow evening. It's our off night. But we come back on Tuesday. Tuesday night, you don't want to miss Tuesday night. The topic is let nobody put you down. Have mercy. If there's any sermon that you want to miss out on, it cannot be Tuesday night. I would like you to bring all my young people, all my teenagers, my young adults, everyone. I want you to bring them for this special message. Let nobody put you down. That's Tuesday night. And Wednesday night, we'll talk more about that as we move along. Tonight, the text I'd like to lay on your heart is taken from the book of John. My grandson, as you know, Marlanzo. Marlanzo is eight years old. And maybe you don't know, but he's a little preacher. Every Friday night, we have our family worship on Facebook Live, and he preaches every Friday night. You should hear him one of these Friday nights. Marlanzo is going to come and read our scripture reading for us. John 19, verse 14 and 15 says, And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Wow. My topic, the pain of rejection. The pain of rejection. Can you bow your heads with me? Father God, we come in your presence tonight and we ask that your Holy Spirit will abide with us. That if in our hearts we are experiencing pain, brokenness, tears, whatever, that you will bind up our wounds and you will dry our tears. I pray for each listener tonight that you will bring blessings upon each one and may this sermon strengthen our resolve to be stronger with ourselves and with you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Rejection, loved ones, is painful. No one wants to be rejected. Yet we all have experienced rejection at one point or another. Rejection by a parent, a child, a spouse, a lover, a friend, a relative, whatever. And when that happens, you will agree with me, it hurts. God knows it hurts. It hurts because rejection leaves an, an empty, hollow feeling inside as if you are not good enough as if you are not wanted, not loved, not needed. And no one wants to, to feel that way. Sad to say, but some of you listening to me are victims of rejection. You can still remember when that person walked out of your life, cheated on you, turned their back on you, or gave you the silent treatment. And you know, the sad thing is that some people have never recovered from their rejection. Some people do not know how to cope when they're experiencing rejection. Some time ago, I, I, I drove into my home and uh, when I got to the front door, 
there was a letter underneath that door. I, I pulled it out and I read it and it was very short. It says, Dear Pastor, come quickly. And if you don't come, you will read about it. And the person signed so we knew who it was. My wife and I got in the car and we quickly drove down to this individual. And luckily, thank God we had gotten here because the person had just overdosed. And it's a sad, sordid story. She was engaged to this guy. They were to be married. The date was set. She had her gown. She everything, the cake was baked. Her bridesmaid and groomsmen, they were all ready. Two weeks out of the date of her wedding. Two weeks. A friend of hers came to her and said, I thought you said, let's call the person Johnny. I thought you said Johnny was coming out to marry you. She says, yes, he'll be coming next week. She says, ah, oh, Johnny is here already. And Johnny marries someone else. What are you talking about? Ah, oh. and she, she showed her the wedding program. Johnny came out last week, had a different wedding, was dating two persons, promise both of them marriage, make wedding preparation for both, and married one. And it affected this lady. And she's human, you can understand. It must affect her. Any one of us find ourselves in this category, it would affect us. She was not able to cope. And that's why she went and overdosed herself. But I want you to listen to me, my friends. You have to cope. You have to cope. COVID or no COVID, rejection or no rejection, you have to cope. No matter how painful it is, no matter the burden, you have to cope because there is no rejection that is worth dying over. Did you hear what I say? Do you really hear what I say? Let me repeat myself. Let me repeat myself, loved one. I say there is no rejection that is worth dying over. Jesus Christ has already given his life for you. You don't have to die for anyone. He has died for you. You die for no one. When someone rejects you, when someone rejects you, you must ask God for strength to cope. Ask God for the courage to go on. Ask God for the determination to press on. Ask God for faith to trust him more. Ask God for peace in your heart. Ask God to help you, but don't harm yourself and don't harm anyone else. Songwriter says, Still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me and I am his child. You're under his wings, my friends, under his wings. Whom from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. No matter the rejection, no matter the pain, no matter the hurt, you are under the everlasting wings of the Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. You can rest assured when you're under his wings, you can cope. So my friends, I want you to remember tonight that when there is no husband, you still have a God. When there is no wife, you still have a God. When there is no fiancé, you still have a God. When there are no relatives, you still have a God. When there is no job, you still have a God. When there is, even when there is sickness, you still have a God. For he has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. He says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Fear thou not. For what? I am with you. I am with you. I am with you. Rejection can lead to a lot of complications. Rejection can lead to depression. People get so depressed. The, the rejection can cause you to lose your sense of self, your self-worth, your self-value, who you are. I've seen people, individuals who once had a pride on themselves, who used to take good care of themselves and because the relationship 
broke up, the marriage went, or whatever it is, it's like they are dragging themselves down. No, my friends, don't let that happen to you. As a matter of fact, listen to me carefully. If somebody rejects you, if somebody rejects you, divorce you and walk away. Break up the relationship and walk away. That is not the time for you to be, be wallowing in the miry clay and dressing any and anyhow. No, 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 no. When that happens to you, pick yourself up by the bootstrap. Yes, it hurts, but you have a God. Yes, it hurts, but he will heal. Yes, it hurts, but he will help you to cope. Dress yourself up, my friends. If you never used to go to the hairdresser, start going to the hairdresser and fix up your hair. Put on some nice clothes. Buy some some real heels for that shoes and when you walk walk with a little pride and step with a little pep and and, and and let the world know that you are still alive you are still god's child and you're gonna let nobody turn you around rejection or no rejection you are still of value and worth Sometimes people experience feelings of hopelessness and helplessness. Suicide. Suicide ideation. I know a man, his girlfriend broke up with him. And he got a piece of rope, went down to the river, and got a, head, a huge stone, tie one end of the rope around his neck, another end around the stone, and jump. Someone that I know personally, and jump into the river and took his own life. Let me tell you something, young people. When that boy breaks up with you, when that girl breaks up with you, if you commit suicide, if you kill yourself because you're so mad and so upset and you don't want to live anymore and you don't want to go on, hello, hello, hello. No matter how we love you, no matter how your parents love you, no matter how your church loves you, we have to bury you. Mm -hmm. We have to bury you. We may get an expensive casket, but we still have to bury you. They will bring a lot of flowers, but we still have to bury you. They will sing a lot of songs, but we still have to bury you. They're going to cry and cry and cry, but we still have to bury you. And guess what, young, young people? The same young man that you kill yourself over will turn up to the funeral, sit at the back bench with a gum in his mouth and his arm around the new girl. Couldn't care, but you are dead. You are dead, 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 dead. It's not worth it. There is no rejection that is worth dying over. Tell your heart that, tell your soul that, Tell yourself that there is no rejection that is worth dying over. Some people experience sleepless days and nights, abandonment of gold and dreams, lack of faith in the Almighty. Some people stop going to church. They stop praying to their Heavenly Father. For some of them, they stop reading their Bibles. They just give up. And this is of the devil. Understand me. This is of the devil. This is exactly what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to become depressed. Satan wants you to become broken. Satan wants you to become discouraged. Satan wants you to become hopeless. Satan wants you to become stressed out. Satan wants you to let go your hold on God. So hear me now. If you have been rejected if you're experiencing feelings of rejection or you know someone who is here are some ways to cope here are some ways to cope number one believe in yourself and believe in your god you know, some people don't believe in themselves. As a matter of fact, some people find it difficult to love themselves. They love everybody else, but they don't love themselves. No, 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 no. You make sure you love yourself first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not narcissism. Love yourself first. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't expect somebody to love you. To love yourself. 
Accept yourself for who you are. If you're tall, you're tall. If you're short, you're short. If you're big, you're big. If you're small, you're small. Love yourself. If you're black, you're black. If you're brown, you're brown. If you're white, you're white. If you're pink, you're pink. Love yourself. If your hair is tall, straight, it's straight. If your hair is nothing, it's nothing. If you're born, you're born. Whatever it is, love yourself. Stop looking at other people and say, I wish I was, I wish I was. You are who you are. Love yourself. So believe in yourself. And yes, believe in your God. Tell yourself that this is not the end. As painful as it is, folks, I'm not minimizing the pain. I'm not minimizing how it hurts. I understand it. I'm a therapist. I've been there for people. I've worked them through the pain. I've helped them to go through it. I've seen the tears. I understand the pain. But it's not the end. Tell yourself that God will give you the strength. Tell yourself that weeping may endure for the night, but the God you serve will bring joy in the morning. And if it doesn't come in the morning, it will soon come for you. Tell yourself that by the grace of God, this too will pass away. There's no nothing known as eternal suffering or eternal pain or eternal crying one day it will be over and the quicker you get a hold of yourself the quicker it will be over so that's the first thing for you to cope love yourself and love your god the second way of coping is do not run after the person did you hear what i say do not run after anyone don't run after anyone's friendship don't run after anyone's love don't run after anyone's loyalty don't run after anyone's affection don't run after anyone's company no 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 my friend let me tell you something if you run after friendship and love and loyalty and affection and company all you are in the relationship is a doormat a doormat. No, let me let me be honest with you. I've seen a lot of doormats. They are very. Some of them are very pretty, very colorful. Some have the beautiful word "home, sweet home." Some have the lovely words "welcome to our home," and they have some beautiful flowers and pictures and what have you. But I have never seen anyone take that beautiful doormat and put it on the dining table and eat over it. Eat over it. No, no, no. Every doormat. No matter how pretty, no matter how colorful, is put outside at the door, and what people do is wipe their feet on it. Don't be a doormat in any relationship and let any man, any woman, wipe their feet on you. If you have to run, if you have to run, run to Jesus, run to his love and mercy. Run to his care and kindness. Run to his grace and peace. Run to his forgiveness. Run to his mercy. Run, run, run to Jesus. Third way of coping. Compose yourself. We're talking about if you're experiencing rejection, if you know someone who is experiencing it, what you can do for them, what you say to them. The third thing is compose yourself. Stop the crying. For heaven's sake, stop the crying. Start eating good food, not junk. Start eating some good food. You know why? Life goes on. Mm -hmm. When your heart is broken, you will cry. When people abuse you, you will cry. When relationships are broken, you will cry. When, but, but my friends, don't cry forever. Let Jesus dry your tears. Compose yourself. Don't, don't starve yourself. Remember, life goes on with Jesus. Number four, fourth way of coping, stop the denial. Accept the reality of your situation. It's over. Stop the dreaming. It's over. Accept the fact. It's over. Deal with it. I say if it's over, find meaning, new meaning for your life. If it is over, 
then it's over. But you're not dead. No, it's over, but you are not dead. It's over. Pick up the broken pieces. It's over. Let go and let go. He says, Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Isaiah 49 and verse 6, 16. Fifth way of coping. Fifth way of coping. Pray and ask God to give you the strength to move on. Don't sit there in it. Move on. Pray for healing. Healing for your pain. Pray for healing for your soul. Pray for strength for your heart. Pray for your tears to be wiped away. Pray for courage to face another day. Pray, pray, pray until the light breaks through because there is power in prayer. You know, my friends, loved ones, our world has experienced more, have, has experienced some great human tragedies. Tragedies that should never have taken place on the face of the earth. I've had the privilege of visiting the Holy Land five different times. And yes, I've been to some of the beautiful places, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Garden of Gethsemane, and yes, Gargotha. But one of the painful places that I have visited so many times and I cannot forget is the Holocaust Memorial Center, a museum erected in memory of the six million Jews who lost their lives during the Holocaust. I've seen so much of the pictures they had to show, the videos and what have you, of the atrocities that went on there. The gas chambers. I, I, I literally, I literally, literally walk into one of those gas chambers. I'm telling you, it turns your stomach when you know so many people died inside that place. The concentration camps. Oh, those Jews when they were sent to the camp, they were stripped of everything they had, was taken away from them. They were literally starved to death. And when they died, sometimes they buried them in the most inhumane way. More than six million of Abraham's children. The atrocity of the Holocaust. I had the privilege of visiting the country of Rwanda uh, a few times, several times. And part of my visit was to deal with and counsel with genocide survivors. You remember the genocide started April 7 of 1994 and it lasted for 100 days, just 100 days. But in those 100 days, more than 800,000 people were slaughtered. Tutsis, Hutus slaughtered more than 800,000 Tutsis in less than in 100 days. Visited the Genocide Memorial Center in the city, the capital of of, of, of um, Rwanda, which is Kigali. And as I walked through and I saw man's inhumanity to their own, what really turned my stomach was when I got into that room, that room, a hall of youth, where they had the pictures of so many young people that were butchered in the, in the genocide. 12, 13, 14, 15 years old and 16 and he had a little write-up this is obeb he was murdered in front of his parents he wanted to be a football star this is jacobin his head was cut off he wanted to become a physician and one by one i read and as i read i say oh my lord it was painful painful I visited Ghana a few times and went to this Elmina Castle. Elmina Castle was erected by the Portuguese in 1842. 
important stop for the Atlantic slave trade. And as I toured that castle where slaves were, were kept until the next ship, and they, I saw where they were taken out of this one room where they did everything in that room and the walkway right through the last door in that castle when they would now go out onto the boats to take them to the ship. And over the door, the sign is still there, the door of no return. That's marked on the door, the door of no return because not one, not one slave had left their homeland Africa for whichever country they were taken to was able to return. The coronavirus has taken this world by storm. Over 32 million people have lost their lives. In your country, Canada, now don't blame me for the statistics, I just pull it off the internet, but they say over 150,000 people were infected and 9,255 died. Again, I just pulled that from the internet, so don't blame me for that statistic if it's not correct. But the point I'm making is so many people were affected and so many people died. So with all of these atrocities and infection, how do you explain God's love? Why should six million of Abraham's seed suffer the tragedy? Why would 800,000 people suffer such brutality in the genocide? Why would 32 million people suffer from the horrible pandemic? Why would the countless of other tragedies that plague the land keep occurring? Is God powerless to save? Let me quickly attempt to answer this question, my friends. But let me answer it by saying, any nation, and I want you to listen to me very carefully, any nation, any people that rejects the covenant God, he will remove his protection. The more we, we rebel, the more we add sin to sin, the more we reject his precepts, the more we depart from his principles, is the more the Spirit of God is withdrawn from the earth. And when the Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth, man left to himself is worse than a beast. Ellen White says, those who have no sense of the goodness and mercy of God who refuse his merciful warnings, who reject, who reject his counsel to reach the high standard of Bible requirements, who do, the, who do despite the spirit of grace, the Lord would remove his protecting power. You hear that? The Lord will remove his protecting power. She says, I was shown that Satan would en entangle and then destroy. When you ask the question why, here's the answer. Satan entangles and then destroy. So don't blame God for the problems of this world. The enemy has done it. And when we reject God, we fall into the hands of the enemy. So let me ask you, my friends, if we, if, are you rejecting God? Are you rejecting the Savior? Are you rejecting the Master? Are you rejecting your Lord? Think about it. You remember when Jesus at his crucifixion, when Pilate asked the question, shall I crucify your king? The people answered, we have no king but Caesar. What do you want me to, who do you want me to release? He asked, they said, Barabbas. What then shall I do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? They say, crucify him, crucify him. That is rejection. And I'm saying to God's people, when we reject our covenant God, any nation, any, any family, any individual who rejects their covenant God, God will remove his protection. So I close by asking you the question, is it possible, my friends, that there's somebody listening to me right now that is doing just that? rejecting the Lord, maybe rejecting him for pleasure, rejecting him for material things, rejecting him for a relationship, friendship with the world, opportunity, and some people even reject him for nothing.
Tonight, my friends, he's calling you back. He said, I want you to come back to me. Don't reject me. When we reject God, you know, we've already said rejection is a painful thing. It hurts us when someone rejects us. It's also hurt God when we reject God. So he's calling you back tonight. He says, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. And a number will come on your screen. I want you to know you call that number. Text family as, we, as you were told. And talk to the pastor. Talk to someone. Tell them. You listen to that message. And you know you have drifted. You love God. You want to be with him. You don't want to reject him. But you have drifted away. You do not want God to remove his protection from you. So the best thing to do is to come back. Because any nation any family, any individual that rejects God, eventually he removes his protection. Bow your heads with me. Father God, there is somebody who has listened to this sermon who needs to come back to you. Somebody who has drifted away from you. May they call the number that is on the screen. And even if they don't have a pen to write it down or whatever it doesn't appear it did not appear help them to find the apple creek church pastor or any member of that church and say i want to come back to jesus come home ye who are weary come home earnestly tenderly jesus is calling calling oh sinner come home when you come he will give you the power to cope no matter what it is amen and amen god bless you friends thank you for the opportunity remember tomorrow is our off night we're inviting you to come back on tuesday night when our topic will be let no one put you down let nobody put you down as we continue to talk about the family may the lord bless and keep you and remember call that number and tell the pastor or an elder or a member you want to come back to jesus god bless you well well said doc indeed we appreciate what you shared with us as we were challenged in dealing with in dealing with rejection i want us to send questions if you have questions for the doctor i'm going to ask that you send those questions via the website chat if you have questions and these must be family life related questions so the regular questions no but family life related questions send those questions in between now and tuesday morning and on tuesday evening during these meetings we will read those questions and the doctor will answer the questions i want to thank those who have joined us from numerous states in america across canada even as far as the Caribbean. We really appreciate you joining us, and we're encouraging you to tell someone else about it. Tell someone else that you have been blessed. Let them know that they also can be blessed. So on Tuesday night, as the doctor said, we will not be here tomorrow, but on Tuesday evening at 7.30, we'll be back on air, and we are encouraging you to be with us in that all-important service. May God bless you. May God bless your families as we strive together for the kingdom of God Almighty. Bow your heads with me for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord keep your families together and eventually save you as a family in his kingdom. We ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and all the listeners say, Amen. Until Tuesday evening, God bless you and we love you all. Say, I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. Say, we're all, we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. With
it is his will that every We're going to do that one more time. This time I want us to sing it like we believe that the person next to us or near to us is important to us. Because we need them. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all, we're all a part of Listen. Is his will 